While you do not find the word rapture in the Bible, you certainly find the doctrine of the rapture. The rapture is the return of the Lord Jesus Christ to receive the physical bodies of His children saved in the church age. He comes to get His bride and take her home with Him to heaven, so that after purifying the church at the judgment seat of Christ, He can marry her. Look at the promise of His return for His people in John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. He says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So, after you get saved by the Lord, you can look forward to two things. You can look forward to being with him in your soul and spirit the moment you die. As Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, absent from the body, and to be present with the Lord. And then, at the rapture, you can look forward to being with Him bodily for all eternity. Now, the two main passages of Scripture concerning the rapture are 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 14 to 18, and 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 48 to 56. And we're going to look at both of these passages in detail, so you might want to get your Bible and look at these verses in your Bible with me as we go through them. All right, the first passage is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 14 to 18. And what that passage says is this, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. That's the first part of it. You see, in that piece we see that Jesus did rise from the dead. And when you believe that, when you put your trust in his resurrection you are put into Jesus Christ. Then when you die, you literally sleep in Jesus, as this verse says. So when Jesus returns for us at the rapture, he comes for the bodies of those who are asleep in him. Now let's look at verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. You see, when Jesus returns, there are going to be two groups of saints awaiting his return. There will be those who are alive at his coming, and there will be those who have already died. Those who are alive will not precede those who are de dead in the rapture. Rather, the alive and the dead will both go up at the same time. They're not split, for instance, into two different groups, and they don't go up at two different times. Then verse 16 says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Notice that the Lord himself descends. This is very important when you compare Matthew chapter 24, verse 31, which is a different rapture. That is the rapture of the tribulation saints. And notice what accompanies him when he arrives. He comes with a shout. And that shout, according to Revelation chapter 4, verse 1 is, come up hither. He comes with the voice of the archangel. That's going to be Michael or Gabriel. Most likely Gabriel, since Michael is the angel of the Jews, according to Daniel chapter 10 and Daniel chapter 12. He comes with the trump of God. In Revelation 4, 1 and Revelation chapter 1, verses 10 and 14, we see that this is the sound that Jesus makes when he speaks. Now please note, this is not the seventh trumpet of Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. That's a different thing. And according to the text that we're reading here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, when he comes, the dead rise first. But the transaction is so quick that there is virtually no time difference between their rising and our being caught up together with them. Now let's look at verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. 
So we which are alive and remain are those who are still alive at the time of the rapture as opposed to those who have died before his arrival and are awaiting his return in the grave. These two classes of saints are mentioned by Jesus in John chapter 11, verses 25 and 26, where the Bible says, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Now, these are the dead in Christ at his return. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. These are the alive in Christ at his return. So according to verse 17, we meet the Lord in the clouds, and you know what? This fulfills Acts chapter 1, verses 9 through 11, where the angels who were there at the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ told the disciples that the Lord would return in the clouds. Now notice that we meet him in the air rather than on the earth because he will not set foot on the earth again until he has destroyed the armies around Jerusalem and he is ready to sit on David's throne. You can read all about that in Zechariah chapter 14. Now further, according to verse 17 in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we read this, we shall ever be with the Lord. Now this is in a physical sense. You see, right now, he is with us spiritually. Uh, in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, we read, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And we are with him spiritually as well, according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, where we have been raised together and sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we also have verse 18, where the Bible says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. And you know what? We take comfort in this promise, particularly when we're standing over the grave of a loved one. The other passage in Scripture that we want to look at is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 48 through about 56. And in this passage, we read about some other things that take place at the rapture, and we also read some confirmation of what we've already read in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 48 and 49 say this, As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. See, according to this passage, we shall be like the Lord's heavenly body. Philippians chapter 3 verse 21 says, Who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Another passage that speaks about this glorified body is 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. They say this, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Now what these verses describe is our glorified body. We get a body that is just like the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's physical, but then again, it's also supernatural. Between you and me, I can't wait. All right, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, also we look in verse 50, and here's what he says. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Well, according to that verse then, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And the reason is that our body has been messed up. It's been cursed. It's been affected by sin. And the evidence is the blood. Our blood is bad. So what we need to do is we need to get a body that is void of this blood. We need a flesh and bone body. That's why Paul said when we get saved that we are members of his flesh and of his bones. See, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, there's no mention of blood. When Jesus described his resurrected body, he described it as being flesh and bones in Luke chapter 24, verse 39. Here's what he said. 
He said to his disciples, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself, handle me and see. For a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. Notice he didn't say anything about blood. Then in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51, we read this, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Now, those that sleep are dead at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, and those who are changed are alive at His coming. Okay, so in verse 52 he says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. So in a moment, which is described as the twinkling of an eye, we go up. We're changed. You know something? That's faster than a blink. Verse 52 says, the last trump is the sound uh, that the trumpet will make when we're called to come up hither. And in verses 52 through 54, we keep on reading, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. You see, in that passage right there, the dead are the ones who are corruptible. They are the ones whose bodies are decaying in the ground. And they're going to be raised incorruptible. That's because the dead are corruptible now, and they have to put on incorruption for the future. The alive, on the other hand, are the mortal who must put on immortality. And they're mortal because they can die. But when they're changed, they're given a brand new body that can never die. You remember what Jesus Christ said in John chapter 11, verse 26? He that liveth and believeth in me, watch it, shall never die. That's because we are made immortal. In verse 54, death is swallowed up in victory. You know what that is? That is a clear indication that once the rapture takes place, those who are raised will never die again. We will have victory over death forever. Now the passage goes on to say in verses 55 and 56, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. You know what? There's coming a time when there will be no more sting of death because we will never sin again. And there will be no more victory of the grave because we will never die again. Like Revelation chapter 21 verse 4 says, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. You know what I have to say to that? Praise the Lord. My friend, the next great event on God's calendar for the church is the rapture. So you know what you need to do? You need to get ready. We are fixing to fly.